Welcome back to yet another episode of uh, Renegades Ramble. Yeah, I remember playing Twist Metal 2 on a little pool. Yeah, yeah, little, yeah like, and like you sit with this big little bubble VCR. Back. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, had a little VCR in the bottom. Yeah. Do it again. <laughs> Everything is loud, though. <laughs> Your phone is too loud. <laughs> Good one. Just, I, Good one, Ron. Good one. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to yet another episode of Renegades React. Today, we're looking at some uh, some comedy, some uh, grade A comedy. Some would say. Uh, Dan out of Dan. You know, uh... <laughs> John Panetti was a comedian who, honestly, I don't think ever got the full recognition he deserved. I mean, he was very, very funny. Uh, he was only 50 years old when he passed away, unfortunately. Uh, because of his constant weight issues, he... <clears throat> he, uh, you know, died at a very early age. But during his life, he actually told some pretty damn funny stories... Have either of you ever heard of John Panetti before? I feel like I've heard his name, but I don't think I've ever heard his comedy. Kyra? I, th I think the same. I've probably heard his name, but not the comedy. Okay, that's fine. Well, so... People are rediscovering him now. It's a whole lot like... that. I call it the Hedberg effect. Because Hedberg, Mitch Hedberg became extremely popular after he died. Same thing happened with Bill Hicks. Same thing. It's It's like... People look at these comedians who passed away and see that their introspects on a lot of things are actually pretty damn funny. Hmm. <clears throat> I actually got introduced to Mitch like a couple of years before he died by one of my friends. And uh, I think that was like freshman year of high school that she introduced me to him. And I was just like, dude, yes, this guy's hilarious. And he passed away and we were all sad. I'm like, oh. Oh, well, yeah, well. Everything we love dies. <laughs> <laughs> Comes with the territory, I guess. So, anywho, John Panetti. Uh, my friend Clint was a huge fan of his. And uh, he uh, he recommended one to me. It was a uh, it was uh, one uh, about him going to a water park with his family. And he didn't have any swimming trunks. All he had was a Speedo. I'll leave it at that. Fair uh, enough. <laughs> so... Anyway, what we have here is we have John Panetti's All You Can Eat Buffet's uh, routine. And, uh, yeah, let's give it a watch. And uh, let's see what y'all think. I love All You Can Eat Buffet's. I do, too. <laughs> As evidenced by my big belly. I'm a big old boy. It's a pleasure to be here because I was just in Las Vegas. So I need the money. I lost a lot of money. I really did. <laughs> I mean, I get them back at the buffet, don't get me wrong. <laughs> $9.95, boy, you can eat. We'll see who wins this friggin' hand out. <laughs> <laughs> I do believe I have blackjack. I was at the prime rib counter going, hit me again. <laughs> <laughs> the buffet manager was horrified. You should have seen him. He looked like a deer caught in the headlights. <laughs> Get the prime rib back in the kitchen. <laughs> Finally, just, they just gave me my money back. Here's your thousand. Get out! <laughs> Actually, they have a buffet in Las Vegas. It's called the Oz Buffet. It's the Wizard of Oz thing, and it's a buffet. You walk up and it's the Emerald City and it's an all you can eat buffet. I ran to it. Yeah, how did the woodchuck, how did the doctor, how did the doctor, how did the sunset, Fine ribs and pork chops and scampi, oh my. Fine ribs and pork chops and scampi, oh my. Yeah. You know, I talk about buffets not because I'm a big guy. No, I'm actually writing a book, Around the World in 80 Buffets. <laughs> and in my research, I found that there are some foods that shouldn't be all you can eat. Like Chinese food shouldn't be all you can eat, because you get hungry again. I don't know 
what it is. They put something in it. They must. Because I order takeout, they're always real happy. Oh, he gonna be back. <laughs> <laughs> I give that big boy one hour. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> you do get hungry again. What is it, too? And you go from full to starving. There's nothing in between. You go from, oh my God, I can't believe I ate all that chow mein. Hey, look, they brought egg rolls. <laughs> <laughs> it's because you rent Chinese food, you don't buy it. So I went to this Chinese all you can eat buffet, and while the owner, he got pissed. I mean, he was rude, though. He'd come out every hour. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a bitch, still here. Look, <laughs> <laughs> he go again. <laughs> he started screaming at me. You're gone now. You're here for hour. Why you here for hour? Do not come here anymore. <laughs> Why you have spare rib? You're so big. <laughs> <laughs> Eat vegetable. Gladly. Oh, Eat mom, broccoli. <laughs> you scare my wife. <laughs> <laughs> food shouldn't be all you can eat. <laughs> now, Japanese food. For the book, I went to an all-you-can-eat sushi place. Mm. <laughs> all the raw stuff I can eat, huh? It was $22.95. $22.95 for raw fish. $22.95, you throw this on the grill. <laughs> <laughs> $22.95, I can't eat a dollar's worth. I brought a seal. I put him right under the table. Another plate, please. That seal ate buckets full. The owner thought I was eating it all, though. Got yelled at again. <laughs> this guy scared me. He reminded me of Lord Toronaga from Shogun. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> Big boy! <laughs> Big boy, come here! <laughs> <laughs> Yo, eat like free! That's you eat like free willy. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I want to visit Japan. You know, sumo wrestlers in Japan are icons. Oh, I don't think I could be a sumo. No, no, they're big. <coughs> no, they really, I mean, those guys are big. I look at them and go, oh, you've let yourself go. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I also tried for the book? Tried Indian food. Have you been out for Indian food? Yeah, bring a sandwich. Because <laughs> you know they're starving in India. Now I know why. <laughs> they got plenty of food, they just don't know how to cook it. <laughs> you see, Indian food's too spicy. <coughs> it's, it is spicy. Spicy's a relative term, I know that. Spicy can mean a lot of things. Spicy could mean, oh, geez, you know, that burnt my tongue a little bit. Or it could mean, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Would you like some water? <laughs> no, thanks. I always scream at the table. <laughs> <laughs> it's too hot. I had that curry chicken. It went through my colon like a Japanese bullet train. <laughs> 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 I wasn't at the table five minutes. Where's the bathroom? Way over there, huh? 
<laughs> Please, God, let me make it. Don't let me take a dump in the lobby. <laughs> Don't look at the line. They served all the curry at once. They shouldn't do that. <laughs> 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 that was pretty good yeah, yeah. John was a funny guy that's the kind of jokes though like the accents like nowadays you get fucking shit on for doing he wouldn't give a shit it's like racist John... they can't do that accent it's racist well like... John wouldn't give a shit he'd just be like he'd just be like oh I can't do the accent okay stop me hmm. come on I'm waiting come on up here stop me most good comedians don't give a shit yeah. Uh, it's just like this one guy told this... Uh, he he told this joke about how uh, he still held the door open for women even though they would be, you know, be a little flippant about it. Because he said, because to me, eventually one day they're going to look back on me holding that door open for them and go, you know what, he wasn't such a bad guy. And, and, he, and he was just like, Oh, you don't you don't think I should hold a uh, door open for women? Okay, I'll hold it closed just for you. <laughs> to which she was just like, she was just like, no, you get the f out of the way. You know what? Get off the effing stage. And he's just like, make me leave. I, come on, make me leave. She comes up on the stage, pours a drink on his head, and then <clears throat> and then walks off. And he's just like, does somebody here not understand context? I mean, seriously. Like, he just kept going. He didn't give a shit. He just got a drink. He just got a full beer poured on him. And he's just like, he didn't care. <laughs> Good comedians are like that. I mean, it, they they don't care if they're getting killed out there. Like, Bill Burr is one of my favorite examples. Actually, you know, that's him right there. Bill mm-hmm. Burr. One of my favorite examples is his uh, rant in Philadelphia. Did I ever tell you all about that? <clears throat> I felt like I might have heard about when it. When he... Uh, Philadelphia was a very, like, it, that night, that it was, it was actually a, uh, show, it was, it was about a, I think six months after the 9-11 tragedy, and he went to Philadelphia with all these other comedians for a benefit show for 9-11. This place was so bad, they booed Santa Claus off the stage. What the fuck? Santa Claus came <laughs> out and just like, ho, 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 Merry like, like, just like, I know it wasn't six months. It was a, uh, it was about three months. It was Christmas time. Sorry, yeah. my mistake. <clears throat> Bad timing. Anyway, um, they boo Santa Claus off stage, and then the first guy goes up. And he gets booed to oblivion, and he's just like real shook up about it. And Bill heard his set, and his set was pretty good. Just no one would give him an opportunity to say anything. Bill Burr goes out on stage and loses it. They <laughs> tried to no. He he goes ape shit. On the entire city of Philadelphia. He's like, every single one of you pimple back pieces of shit in this room can go suck it. Y'all can just go suck an egg. And you know what? You got one fucking bridge to this city. That's one bridge too many. We need to trap you all on this fucking island and leave you here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, heroes of the city. Rocky Balboa. Yeah, you, your favorite boxer of all time is a fictional Italian boxer. You got Joe freaking Frazier. Who was who was one of the greatest boxers ever? And where's his where's his statue, huh? Where's his trophies? Where's his day? No, instead you're gonna celebrate a fake boxer. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Just goes on a tirade for like a good solid twenty minutes, and by the end of that twenty minutes, the entire crowd is just is just like applauding him of just how like just how he stuck through it. Just how savage he was. Yeah, <laughs> he didn't care. He like. He went off on like he's like he's like yeah yeah this 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 freaking convention hall uh, seats twelve thousand that's twelve thousand abortions that should have been <laughs> and just like kept going and going it was awesome and uh, uh, that's what made him famous that's what made him like uh, like <clears throat> actually Dave Chappelle saw that saw that and Dave Chappelle gave him a job on the Chappelle show as as a writer and an actor and 
Bill has been going successfully ever since then. For but he was he was still a pretty well known comedian, but that one like shot him to the stratosphere in terms of popularity. Now he's fifty and he's more popular than ever, and it's just it, it his comedy's hitting with people now. Yeah, and I get it. I <clears throat> I see Bill Burr's stuff. He it's just like him. He hates he hates like uh, like parts of society that are just where everyone's like sheep. He said. Yeah, I was driving down May- on uh, down Fifth Avenue in New York, just like driving my car, and I look down the side of the road and I see all these people lined up outside of these shops for shopping. It took every bit of my power not to just go. <laughs> Good shit, dude. Good shit. I love Bill Burr, but um. John Panetti uh, was uh, was uh, actually knew Bill Burr pretty well. Him and him and Bill actually worked a lot of uh, a lot of houses together. And um, John, when when John passed away, he was uh, he was fifty years old, and yeah, uh, you know, it, it shook Bill because Bill was just like, "Holy shit, dude! I this like I I got to think about my future. I got to get married. I got to do this and do that." And Bill actually got married and had his had his first kid uh, here recently, and uh, he's just. It, it's just hilarious to me to, to, to see Bill Burr, his entire career was just like, I am never getting married and I am never having kids. And it took John Panetti dying to him just be like, oh, fuck, I need to get married and have some kids. I think John would laugh at him. <laughs> like, like, John's looking at him down from upstairs. He's like, ha! Told you you'd get married, you little bastard. <laughs> you little red devil. <laughs> oh, that's another comedian though that's on the screen that we should react to sometime that's passed away is Ralphie May. Yeah, Ralphie was a was, he was, a, was funny. really fucking good, dude. Yeah. I remember the first thing I saw of him, uh it was actually uh he was in front of pretty much an all black crowd in Texas and he killed it. He he like they were heckling people all night and he just came out. He's just like he's like <laughs> he just goes <clears throat> Like, for back, lack of a better term, you know, because he was a fat dude, he went ham on him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ralphie May, he's a good one. Uh, there's a lot of really, really good uh, comedians out there who passed I'm trying to remember away. some of his jokes that I thought were really funny. Yeah. <laughs> my fa- one of my favorite ones was like, it was just a really short one. He's like, he's like, yeah, I lost a little bit of weight since y'all last saw me. Yeah, I lost about 150 pounds. Yeah, but I still got, I still got some heft to me, boy. Yeah, when you lose the weight of an entire person and you're still fat as hell, you know there's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> He's not wrong. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> uh, and then there was also uh, <laughs> my, uh, probably one of my favorites was when the uh, when he was talking about. No, I can't do that here because it's too it's too crude. It's it's way too crude. Fair enough. But <clears throat> I'm trying to think of the one that he did uh, with it was a. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, he was sitting there. He's oh, uh, it was the one where he was talking about. Uh, he's like, look, I ain't got no problem with with people who are gay. You know, be gay all you want. I don't care. But how come y'all got to throw a parade that fucks up traffic for three days? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean honestly, look, y'all can be look go look go be gay all you want. I mean honestly, uh, why y'all got yeah? Why I gotta be? Why, why the hell do I gotta sit up in traffic for three days just so little bunny foo foo can be out there and go for yay for dick? I like it in the butt. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then uh. he's just and he's like you know. And another thing about gay people, gay people are greedy as hell because they took the entire rainbow. They what what why not just take hot pink or something like that? But no, they gotta take the entire goddamn rainbow. I want the <laughs> rainbow back. You can't have the rainbow, you greedy <laughs> bastard. I want the. I'm claiming the rainbow back. Because when you were a kid, remember when you were a kid? Pretty sure Skittles owns the rainbow. They, do, they probably do. They probably do. But yeah. Ralphie was just like, you remember when you was a little kid and you and you drew a house? You were told to like draw a house, like a pretty day outside and everything. You drew a blue sky, sun in the sky, nice house, window and everything. People out, you and your family outside playing. And then you draw a rainbow in the sky. Gay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like uh, look, I don't, look. I don't give a damn. I don't give a damn what you do with your life. Do whatever you want. But why but why but why the rainbow? That's all I'm asking. <laughs> also and, fun fact, another uh, good person who's also now passed away is Rodney James Dio, one of the few men in history mm-hmm. to make rainbows metal. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just a rainbow in the dark! Yep. <laughs> my favorite... That, that solo in Rainbow in the Dark is still, like, one of my favorite solos ever. Vivian Campbell, man. I mean, that man... That, He's in Def Leppard now, and they don't. They do not let him do as he sh- as he pleases. <coughs> if they let him do as he wanted, oh, excuse me. <clears throat> if they let him do as he wanted, I thought I think it'd be awesome, but no. Yeah. Instead, they neutered him. Because <laughs> that solo, he was nineteen when he when he did that solo, and it was it was amazing. Really, really good solo. Uh, okay, we're rambling again. Yeah. But hey, that's we still norm. got five left to go. That's pulled up. So. Yep. So uh, we're going to uh, move on to the next one. Uh, this was John Panetti, All You Can Eat Buffets. Uh, if you want to see the original video, link is in the description down below. And uh, if there are any other comedians out there you want us to react to, let us know in the comments below. And until next time, signing off, I'm Nate. I'm Nick. I'm Kyra. And as always, Mike is on break. And Caleb, thank you. In the com- and make sure to thank the Caleb in the comments. We will see you later, everybody. Oh, peace out. <laughs> I almost said I'm Ben.